All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Human Safarzade. You may call me Hugh if uh, it makes anyone's life easier. I'm a software engineer based on Toronto, and I'm working for the Blast Motion, which is uh, manufacturing the sensors for the sport industry. So if you have any uh, interest in that area, you can check blastmotion.com. And at the end, you can find me at Twitter at Human with double A. So my today's talk subject is about the view and sense and uh, communication with the outside world, which sounds a little bit fancy, uh, but let's look at what is, what, what is the problem and where this idea came from. So at Blast Motion, uh, we have this legacy code base, but uh, the meaning of the legacy has been changed within last year. So back in the day, we would call a, a code base legacy when there was, for example, no test coverage for it or there was no unit test for it. But today is anything older than three, four, five years would be considered legacy. So we are using um, Laravel for our back end and also front end. And where are the Laravel developers today? Okay, not a lot of you guys, but it's okay. <laughs> so, um, so a while ago we started to moving toward Vue.js for our front end. Um, um, this talk would be pretty much extension to Tamara's talk yesterday. So we started using the concept of to have a micro app in our application. So for any new module, we're creating a new Vue.js application and we just communicating on APIs with the back end. So we've done with the, with the module and uh, we created this, that, uh, this um, fully featured uh, filter bar and navigation bar that we were using in this module. And our product team look at it and say, okay, we want it everywhere. But we said, we designed this and coded this in, in Vue and say, no, we need it everywhere. So literally there were like, after a lot of debates and questions, all those kinds of stuff, there were two ways. We had to make this filter bar, the navigation bar in jQuery, which is something we use a lot. Or we had to find a way that these two can communicate together. So um, here is the FAQ, I call it, frequently self-asked question, because we ask this question from ourselves a lot of times. Can we put these together in the same instance, in the same wrapper? No, it wasn't possible. Can we use something like View Portal? Yes or no, we, we could use it, but the, I guess in the next uh, release of the View Portal, they will take out the, this feature that you can render something out of the view scope. So the solution is actually lays on one of the fundamentals of the JavaScript, that the JavaScript in the browsers uses an event-driven programming model. I literally copy and paste this from somewhere. So if we can find a way that our view instance can dispatch some events that somewhere else they can listen to it and the other way can listen for some events, we probably can overcome this uh, issue. So let's look some code. It's gonna be a little bit hard to show stuff with one hand, but so. Is the font big enough for you guys? I can make it a little bit bigger. And so here's an example. We have uh, two things here, actually two two kind of cards. One is a view instance and the other one is a call it outside board. So um, if you look at the view dev tools, we see that this is our view instance and this one doesn't have anything to the, with the view. Uh, the ultimate goal is when we click on this toggle button, we can um, make this card invisible by changing this attribute of true, uh, the visible here. And when we type in something here, we can see it in the outside word card. So let's go back to the code. So the HTML thing, I'm not gonna go through it. The only thing we have is we do have a vshow on the view instance and also on the input, we are firing um, input event uh, when someone typing something on that box and the value change. So you probably all know that the V model is a, like a wrapper for the uh, value prop and uh, input event. So by saying that, if you look at here, we have this, um, I purposely use the jQuery because it might be a case for a lot of you guys. Um, the only thing I need to do is to find this toggle 
button. And when it's click, um, I need to dispatch some sort of event and I have to attach it to something. So there is a debate that you shouldn't attach anything to the window if you are paranoia like me, so don't do it, attach it to somewhere else, but you should be good to go if you want to attach it to the window. And what you use is a JavaScript um, event class. So you're creating an object and uh, passing a toggle to it. And from the other side, in the, in the monthed method, when the, the instance, or it could be a component monthed, uh, we are listening for the same um, event on the same wrapper. And the only thing we're doing is toggling uh, this visible property. So with any luck, after uncommenting those code, if I click on toggle, I get this to work. And it's not just hiding it, we see that the value here is changed. Now, how can we um, send something to um, to the outside world from the view. Um, so in, you remember that we had this um, event handler here for handle input. So it's um, binded to a method that what we can do here is uh, we'll, we getting the same wrapper um, element and we dispatch this time a custom event. Uh, the custom event, the different with the event is that you can uh, passing the payload to it and the other stuff that you need to get um, at the other side. So what we do here, we again listening for the same method, uh, for the same event, which is a message. We get the detail out of that payload, and we find this um, DOM element and change the text on it. So again, with any luck, if I type here, I can get it outside the view word. Now it begs this question that. Uh, so now in a component I'm designing, I have to consider two type of functionality when something is clicked or changed. So it, uh, just dispatch this event, but I also want you to do this thing. Um, this can be overcome by decoupling your code. Uh, what you can do, you can uh, use the idea of having like a base component. So base component can hold your template, um, a lot of the shared um, kind of functionality, data, those kind of stuff. But the other side, you can have, for example, the view component when you use it on your view instance. And what you do, you just extend that component. So it's some sort of um, decoupling that you're gonna, you're gonna do. So let's go back to the keynote. So what is this band-aid? This band-aid um, tells you two things. One, this should be like a temporary solution for you. This is not something that you're going to adhere on every part of your application. This is while, for example, like us, we're transitioning to the um, single page application. But right now, we don't have time. We cannot uh, tell our um, executives that, OK, don't uh, send anything to us for the next four months because we want to make a new SBA. So this is for a transition. The second thing this Band-Aid tells you, when you want to remove the Band-Aids, if you didn't do all the decoupling, it's gonna be hurtful, all right? You're gonna have a lot of coupled code, which ends up with a, what we all know as spaghetti code. Um, I don't like the word of spaghetti code because I love spaghetti, so what I found instead is a iPhone headphones that if it gets to that shape, it's not easy to take it out. So I guess we can wrap it up here. Uh, try to have it as quick as possible. My name is Human. You find me at Twitter, at Human. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day.